This film contains some of the most intimate views of elephants ever seen. But something quite basic lay behind them. Dung. Nine million tons fall on Africa each day. But not all is quite what it seems. These cunningly disguised dung cams infiltrated the herd. Their aim was to explore elephant intelligence from the inside. They messed with fighting bulls. They got down and dirty in swamps. They also witnessed some of the most emotional moments in elephants' lives. These mobile dung cans had smaller static brothers. These were plopped down wherever elephants gathered. These plop cams got up close and even more personal. They captured a baby's eye view of being part of the herd. Floater cams took over when elephants took the plunge. They watched as a baby learnt about life. Even when their disguise was blown, they still made discoveries. Ultimately, the elephants even became cameramen. Faced with some fancy footwork, the cameras kept rolling. spy in the herd spent over 3,000 hours observing totally wild elephants throughout Africa. At times, up to five cameras covered the same event. Here, elephants are about to cross a river. Not so easy when there's a bank to negotiate. The first revelation was the surprising flexibility of the elephant body. It's astonishing how elastic four tons of flesh can be. Toenails can double up as crampons, which is just as well because it's downhill from now on. Time to use those toenails. Ditherers soon get bulldozed. Here, yeah, it's an eye for an eye, and a tusk for a tusk. They push and shove like kids at a swimming pool. And there's always one who digs his heels in. The closer you get to elephants, the more like us they seem. But how intelligent are they? Elephants travel along ancient routes that have been followed for generations. They cross rivers only because they know what lies on the other side. Like us, their long lives and excellent memories enable them to accumulate a huge store of knowledge. Us too, strong family bonds allow them to share this knowledge between themselves.
in Kenya's Amboseli, our dung cans came across an event that showed some of the complexities of an elephant's intelligence and feelings. Something is generating great excitement. But what exactly is going on? A baby has just been born, and his sisters and aunts crowd round like visitors to a maternity ward. His first experience is a forest of welcoming trunks, helping him to his feet. Few other animals show such human-like interest and concern in another's newborn. Bulls live apart. So why does this one choose this moment to join the family gathering? Unsure of the male's motives, the females shepherd the newborn away. The male's purpose now becomes clear. One of the females is in season. Unfortunately, the new baby is distracting his potential mate. He vents his frustration. A young female adopts the caring role of nanny. Good practice for when she becomes a mum. Other females try to help, and the ball kicks out again. But this is controlled aggression. He could inflict real damage if he wanted. The baby's cries are heard by other relatives. The cavalry arrive. The bull's frustration increases. Although he's not out to harm the baby, six tons of mounting passion is getting dangerously out of control. A stockade of legs acts as a baby barrier. This has been a baptism of fire for the newborn, but at last the heat is off. Such a highly charged event shows just how complex and emotional these animals are. But Duncan has more to reveal. It has found two bulls squaring up for a fight. Crossing a swamp can be a major problem for a young baby. His mother uses her tail to check the progress of her wobbly toddler. Adult elephants don't get stuck because as a foot takes the weight, it bulges to spread the load. And when the foot lifts, it contracts again to release the suction. Car just totters. Elephant heaven is baby hell if you've only just learned to walk. Unfortunately, everyone's enjoying themselves so much, they don't seem to notice his plight. At last, a helping trunk comes to the rescue. rush back in a hurry.
elephants can travel up to 80 kilometers a day. But as here in Samburu, most daily journeys are just short trips from the feeding grounds to find a drink. Her trunk can siphon up nine liters in a single sip. That's three times our average intake for a whole day. In a five minute session, she can down the equivalent of three bathfuls. They need to drink so much because five liters evaporates through their skin every hour. For the calf, it's another new adventure and a wall of bodies shields him from crocodiles. Trunks evolve from a fusion of the nose and the upper lip, and he has to learn how to use it, just as a child has to learn how to walk. It will be a while before he can control the 100,000 muscles that make the adult trunk the most versatile of all mammal appendages. It's a nose, an arm and a hand, all rolled into one. Like us, elephants are born with little hard-wired knowledge, but watched over by their family, they learn fast. And when danger threatens, help is always just a trunk away. made it just, but it's not easy being small. The oldest female always leads. The matriarch's 40-odd years of experience is vital for the success of the whole family group. For the calf, the process of learning the traditional roots has just started. But the matriarch always knows what seasonal specialities are on the menu. She even remembers that in the palm nut season, baboons send manna from heaven. Even an extendable trunk can't pluck fruit from a tree that is 20 meters tall. You might think the elephants would show a little gratitude. baby soon learns that chasing other animals is great fun. And all adults, it seems, are young at heart. If you're an elephant, Eating grass demands considerable manipulative skills. A young student has plenty of time to watch and learn. Feeding takes up 80% of an adult's time. They eat 150 kilos of grass each day, and their flatulence matches their appetite. They expel 2,000 litres of methane, enough to run the average gas fire for 10 hours. In trunk school, practice makes perfect. It's a bit like winding spaghetti on a fork. Trunk and foot coordination is one of the more advanced techniques. It'll be a long time before the calf is as expert as this. Lions are the only predators to regularly take young calves. He will soon learn to hate them. Oh. 
here, there's safety in numbers. He can always take refuge in a corral of legs. If he strays, he's soon shepherded back. Stomping is a warning. Threat displays will usually put off a lion. If that fails, she will charge. And her curled trunk and silence shows she's serious. about to try and repel another dangerous animal. They may seem relaxed, but their opponents are very small. Few animals can kneel on their back legs like this, but this is how elephants give their ticks a battering. Few skin parasites survive this kind of pummeling. The mud has other health benefits too, and the whole business can be a lot of fun. As well as dealing with parasites, the mud pack conditions the skin, acts as a sunscreen, and cools the elephant down. Mud, mud, glorious mud. Nothing quite like it for cooling the blood. The typical family unit has a grandmother, the matriarch, with her daughters and their young. But related families of sisters, cousins, aunts and nieces often merge to make up an extended family. In the wet season, even unrelated families may gather together. These are times of plenty so there's no competition for food. A female is in oestrus for only a few days every three years. In a large herd, she is more likely to meet a roaming male at the right time. In their mid-teens, the young males leave the herd and join bachelor groups. Then things start to get more serious still. This sparring tests the strength between contemporaries. It sorts out who's boss without causing injury. Practice fights prepare them for the real thing. Evenly matched bulls like these might fight for more than ten hours. The victor gains mating rights to the females. Often the others don't get a look in. He confirms she's ovulating, but she'll still give him the runaround. <laughs> 
offensive eventually succeeds. He steadies her with his trunk and tusks. The rest of her family crowd round in great excitement, a classic reaction known as the mating pandemonium. Sex education starts early. Her mating bellow will be heard by every male in the neighborhood. It's a come on to see if any of them are even fitter and strong enough to displace her present partner. Excitement over, the female is reassured by the rest of her family. They calm themselves down with a spot of dust bathing. Elephants have a complex communication system involving sounds pitched below our hearing. These infrasounds allow them to keep in touch over tens of kilometers. Their secret language explains how it is that elephants seem to be aware of what other family groups are doing. These are on a pilgrimage to a place of rare mineral wealth. These cliffs in Chobe, Botswana, have been carved out by generations of elephants. Here, a rich seam of essential minerals comes to the surface. This is the elephant equivalent of open cast mining. Delicately, her trunk sucks up the precious powder and blows it into her mouth. It contains minerals and salts missing from their usual diet. a dose of medicinal salts, and then the fun really begins. A spot of talcum powder is always good for babies. This health spa creates great excitement and playfulness. Is this a good-humoured warning to Duncan to keep out of the way?
The mineral salts can be applied in many ways. Body painting is contagious. Soon, the whole herd is turning blue. The skin treatment acts as a general conditioner, as well as keeping parasites at bay. Now, Baby is about to face his biggest challenge. Crossing a large river is difficult even for an adult. For a calf, it's a huge ordeal. He is reluctant, but a trunk persuades him to take the plunge. More calves die in river crossings than from any other cause. In deep water, the adults are of little help. They need their trunks for snorkeling. The calf vainly tries to climb on her back. The greatest danger is being washed away, but other hazards await. Hidden pools can trap an exhausted baby. The crocodiles wait their chance. In the shallows, the mother can finally help She guides her youngster to safety. One last hurdle lies ahead. The bank is steep and slippery. On the other side, something unexpected, an elephant corpse. Elephant graveyards may be a myth, but death holds a strange fascination for them. The hovering foot seems to be trying to deduce who this was. A lost family member, perhaps. The trunk seeks clues from smell. It's as though they're paying homage to someone they once knew. Some scientists believe elephants can grieve. Their actions certainly suggest they're deeply moved by what they find. They fall strangely silent as they fondle the bones. It's difficult to imagine what's going on in their minds, but such an interest in death suggests a recognition of their own existence. 
Only a fully conscious being can think in such a way. Another herd arrives. Immediately, our group sets out to greet them. For the calf, it's his first meeting with distant relatives. There is huge excitement as the two families meet. The calf is still learning his place in the elephant community. Our spy in the herd has given us a sense of what it's like to be born into such a complex animal society. Everything we've witnessed suggests that we have spent time with some of the most advanced creatures on Earth. One thing we can be sure of, Dumbo is certainly far from dumb. Hakuna matata, hakuna matata. 